Scope is one of the very first things you learn. It's one of the most tested concepts in computer science for one of your first tests. And I know it is especially tricky for those who have never programmed in their life to understand scope. Even like years in, I would still have problems with scope. Like, can this see this variable? Can my code actually see it? I'm gonna resolve all the issues for you, hopefully. And we'll run through tons of examples. And it'll be a great time, okay? If you're new here, my name is Alex. I post a Java tutorial on this channel every single week for you, just like this one. So if you're new here and you might be interested in that, then consider subscribing. So let's kick it off. We're in Eclipse. We're gonna go up to File, New, Java Project together. I'll just call it something like Scope. And then inside of that, on the source folder, go to New Class. We'll just call it like um, Periscope, just to make it a little more fun. So what is Scope? Scope is basically what variables can be seen. So if I have a variable here, called a, you have an integer a equal to zero. If we proceed to do something with a, like print it out, then we don't get any errors. And if we run this, then we get the value of a. System.out.println can see a. They're in the same scope. If you think of a telescope or a periscope, scope just means c. So if they're in the same scope, they can see each other. But what if we had an if statement? So let's just try to mesh pieces of code that we know and see if they can see each other. So if we have an if statement, and I'll just say if a is equal to zero, then we'll print out yes. I'll delete this right now. Save it and run it. And we see that yes gets printed out. Even though A is inside of some parentheses, it still knows that A is zero. So we're good there, they're still in the same scope. Now let's see if we can print out A inside of the if statement. Okay, no error so far. And it looks like it can. We create a variable A to zero here, and A can be seen here and even inside of the if statement. Let's do something kind of weird and funky just to test the waters. What if we created a variable called b equal to one inside of the if statement? Let's see, let's try to print out b here. And good, it looks like b and the print statement are in the same scope. That's pretty cool, even though we declared it inside. But what if we tried to do the same thing outside of the if statement? Well, let's just experiment because we are mad scientists. And ooh, there's a red underlined. And I know errors can be kind of confusing to read and to understand, but let's just see what this says. B cannot be resolved to a variable. So it sounds like that the computer doesn't think that b is ever declared as a variable. It doesn't see int b equals one or whatever. So if we deleted this code and hovered over it, we see the same error message because it's as if int b equals one is never there. This is outside of the scope. If I put this back, it looks like B's scope is inside of these curly braces. And it is, this is B's scope. Everything inside of here can see B. However, if this was in front, it couldn't see it because B always has to be declared above when it's being used. But other than that, everywhere inside of here, even if it was like really far down, everything inside of here can see B. And that's why everything inside here can see A, even if A was inside the if statement. But here, since B's scope is these curly braces, anything outside of it can't see it. If I wanted to print B in this situation, I'd have to create a variable B up here. And now we could print B everywhere. 
because B scope is now here since I put it outside. I think the best way to really see this and nail it down for you is to do multiple if statements because they all have curly braces, each one having their own scope. So if I say if B is equal to one, then you can print B, declare B up here, and print B in the same scope. If we run this, then we get one, one. Because A is zero, so we go in here, set B to one, B is one, so we print B here. Since this is B's scope, it's whatever curly braces are inside. So this is inside of these curly braces, so that's B scope. This is inside these curly braces, so that's A scope. And so since this whole thing is B scope, it prints out B here and B here. Let's do one with C. Let's make int C equals two, print out C, and then come down here and maybe print A, B, and C. I'll remove some of the white space to make it a little easier to see everything at once. Okay, we run this, there are errors, because remember the rule for scope is that whatever curly braces it's inside of is a scope. So in C equals two is inside of these curly braces. Only inside of these curly braces and after it's declared can the variable C be seen and used. So since we have a print statement with C out here, it's not inside of these. So if we try to do something with it, with it it'll cause an error. Let's do some more practice here, but with some methods. Let's make a method here. We're just gonna copy over um, some keywords from this main method to sort of give us a template. And we'll say add two numbers, say we wanna add A and B, and then we just wanna print out A plus B. Let's call our method with some numbers inside, three, four, and then it'll print out three plus four, which is seven. If we declare a variable inside of here called C and we tried to use it up here, C, then we couldn't because the rule is whichever curly braces it's inside of is a scope. Anything outside of it doesn't know it exists. So even though we're calling add here and then afterwards we're trying to use C. This code technically is run first, but since it's not in the curly braces, it doesn't matter, it won't work. So that's an example of scope with methods. Another thing you could do with methods is try to do one here in D equals five, and then try to use D here. But as we expect, you can't because it's outside of D's curly braces. Let's do one more example with global variables. So you can set variables up here using a special keyword static and doing business as usual. If you tried to use that here, take a guess. What do you think will happen? Can we use it or can we not? We can use it because A is set up here and the outside curly braces are here. So therefore everything out here and through the whole block can see it. So even if there was another method, let me try to print A, it still can't go through all the methods because it's all in the block. Even if there were if statements, this would work. Like everything would work because A is declared at the top. I hope this helps you with your tests because I know these are some of the trickiest problems for me. And I remember missing a few points off these because I didn't really know how they worked, but hopefully it has helped you enough to get good grades. Thank you for letting me teach you and I'll see you in my next video. Have a great rest of your day.